Hello everybody, welcome back. This is Jesus is Satan, the Morning Star, Part 4. So, like I said, I've already pretty much established where I'm going, and now I just kind of want to tie what I'm saying together with what's going on in the Bible, and just kind of tell him some weird stories in the Bible about the Lord, or the Lord God doing all this weird stuff. And it's all throughout the Old Testament that the Lord God is just doing all kinds of really weird, questionable stuff. So, there's all kinds of little stories that I just kind of want to touch upon. I'm not going to go real in depth into them. But, the Lord God, in Genesis 15:4, the Lord God tells Abram to poop out his child. When he doesn't have, when his wife doesn't have any children for him, and it says in Genesis 15:4, and behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. Bowels are what holds our feces, and that's when we go to the bathroom. It's called a bowel movement. He's saying, poop out the child, because your wife isn't giving you any. So that's pretty odd, I think, right there. Another quick story in Genesis chapter 38, lines 8 through 10, is the story of Onan. And the Lord God basically <laughs> tells Onan to go into his brother's wife and uh, marry her and raise up thy seed. And when Onan doesn't do this and does not impregnate his brother's wife, the Lord kills him. So I think that's pretty odd in and of itself. This is Genesis chapter 38, lines 7 through 10. And Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. And Judah said unto Onan, Go into thee, thy brother's house, and marry her, and raise up seed to thy brother. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his. And it came to pass, when he went unto his brother's wife, that he spilled it on the ground, lest that he should give seed to his brother. So basically, the Lord is killing him for going against the instructions that were given to him from Judah. Judah's telling him to go in there, and then when he doesn't do it, the Lord kills him. I think that's kind of, you know, I think that's another really weird thing that's going on there. Uh, in Numbers, Chapter 25, line 4. It's um, a weird story about the Lord telling Moses to behead people and to hang their heads up into the sunlight. So it's pretty weird here. Then we said this is Numbers 25, 4. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord against the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. He's saying, behead them. Telling Moses to behead people and put their heads in the sun. <laughs> I think that pretty much says a lot. Telling people to behead people. Telling Moses to behead people. Alright, the next story is Deuteronomy. Well, there's all kinds of weird stuff going on. But this is a story where the Lord is telling his followers to eat their children. And like I said, this is uh, Deuteronomy 28, lines 53 and line 57. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, the flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, which the Lord thy God hath given thee, in the siege and in the straightness, wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee. This is 57. And toward her young one that cometh out from between her feet, and toward her children which she shall bear. For she shall eat them for want of all things secretly in the siege and straightness, wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee in thy gates. It's cannibalism. Telling his followers to eat their children. And this is, of course, why the Christian church carries on these metaphoric cannibalistic rituals, like when you go and you eat the wafer and the blood, and you, the, or the wafer and the wine that signifies the blood and the body of Christ. And that's what that is. It's symbolic metaphoric cannibalism. It isn't literal cannibalism, but you're, it's all metaphoric. And it's all based upon this stuff in the Old Testament, too, where the Lord God is telling people 
to eat their own children. So, you know, I think that says a lot right there. You know, this is not this Lord or the Lord God. It just it, it is not omnibenevolent. <laughs> sure doesn't seem that way to me. And if you read all throughout, I'm not going to read this old Bible for you. It take forever. And I'm not going to go through it and hold your hand. I've given you the basics. I'm saying that God and the Lord God and the Lord are separate. Just make sure that, you know, that's what the difference is. And that's why I'm trying to point out these stories. You know, and they're all throughout there. I'm not going to go through all of them. But they're all throughout there. This is in the second book of Samuel, chapter 12, line 11. And this is where the Lord says he's going to give the wives of these men to their neighbors to have sex with in public. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house, and I will take thy wives before thine own eyes, and give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son. Notice all the son references too. Those two stories are there. In the sight of the son, which is the story before where the Lord instructed Moses to behead people. To put in this son stuff right in your face, and that's very important coming up. So like I said, even just take note of that kind of stuff. you got to see the signs. They're all right there. Like I said, that's another story. Here's two stories in different parts of the Bible where that's the exact same sentence and you can basically interchange the Lord and Satan. So this is the second book of Samuel, chapter 24, line 1. And again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he moved David against them to say, Go, number Israel and Judah. Then, if you jump ahead to the first book of Chronicles, chapter 21, line 1, it says almost the exact same thing, only it's Satan. So, here's this. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Same exact thing, almost. Almost word for word. The Lord and Satan are completely interchangeable there. They're putting it right in your face. And like I said, this goes back to the word of cult. This is what they're hiding from your view. This kind of stuff. And like I said, they're all throughout the New Testament here. And like I said, remember these sun references because that's very important coming up in part five. This is part four. And I'm going to end there and I'll be right back very soon. So hopefully you'll still be with me for Jesus is Satan, the morning star.